ladies and gentlemen welcome back to exotic astrology and finally we have reached queen kunti's prayers the most awaited verse which is the favorite verse for me at least because this tells us how to always be happy in life it's the ultimate secret of happiness as one of my gurus once told me so today we will continue with the series it's the uh, first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 8th chapter, 25th verse, all right, 1.8.25 or 25, either way is you want to call it. And uh, if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, then you can go to my website. You will find the link to my website in the description section of my videos below. And if you have not watched the other videos of this Bhagavad Gita playlist, then please go and watch. Otherwise, you may not understand what I am saying here. How Kunti Devi is coming. All right. So, we discussed till 1.8.24 in the previous video that how God actually protects us and how Queen Kunti is saying to Lord Krishna that ultimately you have only protected us from all the calamities which had happened we discussed in detail in the previous video okay so if you have not watched it then please go and watch it all right and here we start 1.8.25 and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you must find him because you will see what she's telling now here okay this is the most amazing verse i had heard long back somewhere in 2010 and i was like wow <laughs> all right so here here the verse goes 1.8.25 Vipada Santo Tat Sashvata Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru Bhavato Darshanam Yad Sayat Apunar Bhava Darshanam. So I am reading the translation. The translation is as follows. I will repeat it twice. Okay. <laughs> I wish, I means Kunti Devi is telling, I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again for seeing you means that we know we will no longer see repeated births and deaths should i repeat i wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again for seeing you means that we no longer see repeated births and deaths my god this should be repeated a hundred times actually but see, she's telling, I wish all those calamities. So these calamities are the difficulties which the Pandavas had faced. The adversities which they faced since their childhood. Because their father Pandu also left when they were very young. And they were, I mean, there's so many conspiracies which were held against them, hatched. And Duryodhan, the head of the Kurus, he was the eldest son of Dhritarashtra, as we know. He had 100 sons. And he was the most cruel, he was the most vicious among all of them. And he had his uncle Shakuni and his best friend Karna and his brother Dushasan. These four primary uh, culprits, they had always hatched one after the other evil plans to kill the Pandavas and to insult their wife Draupadi. But uh, eventually they all perished and justice was served to the Pandavas because they were on the side of virtue, they were on the side of righteousness and Lord Krishna was also there with them on their side because of their uh, good qualities and because they were on the side of Dharma. So Queen Kunti is telling, I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again, my God. <laughs> See, generally sometimes, I've seen, sometimes people say like, I've seen Many mothers doing it sometimes. They will go to God and say sometimes, Oh God, whatever uh, bad things are there in the life of my child, my son or my daughter, please give it to me. <laughs> I will handle all the pain on his behalf. But please don't torture my son or my daughter. Okay, Give all the suffering to me. And sometimes I have seen fathers doing it. Sometimes I have seen... Husbands doing it for their wives or wives doing it for their husbands. Yes, sometimes that also happens. That That's really visible these days. But sometimes I've seen people doing it for their partners also. But it is very easy. It is very, very, very easy to uh, pray to God to give you somebody else's suffering when everything is fine in your life, right? 
when you are getting your paycheck or you are earning well your relationship is fine your son your daughter is doing very good they are topping in the class or they are passing with good results everything is great your health's great you good rep- you have a good reputation in the society everything is fine there's nobody after your life there's nobody there to kill you all right then it's very 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 easy to make such prayers <laughs> but we have to understand the predicament of kunti devi that she was in such a precarious state most of the times of her life i mean she became a widow at a very young age then bhima was given poison yes bhima is one of the pandavas as we know her son they, they had poisoned bhima when he was very young and then her uh, daughter in law dropadi she was insulted publicly in the assembly and duryodhana tried to disrobe her but unfortunately i mean fortunately luckily she was saved and his all plans they did not materialize and then uh, draupadi also lost her five sons so they were kunti's grandsons ashwatthama had brutally killed them in the dead of the night so when everything is finished your entire dynasty is over i mean except draupadi and the pandavas only uh, parikshit maharaj and uttara had survived and maybe a few of them others yes, so it's like saying almost your entire dynasty is finished there's nobody left only a handful of people your husband has left nobody is there so at that state to say to god that i wish that all those calamities would happen again and again wow that requires some substance and because of that she is there in the pages of shrimad bhagavatam many times people say oh we have we had heard about draupadi very much we have heard of sita devi but kunti devi we didn't hear much you know i mean we had heard but uh, she was just the mother of the pandavas but no that's not the case now you understand why she is there in the shrimad bhagavatam so she is telling point number 1 she is telling i wish that all those calamities would happen again and again but now she has a reason for that all right she is not just telling to the universe oh universe keep giving me pain give me pain give me pain give me pain she is not uh, speaking here like a mad person she has a reason for it i wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again who is this you she is referring to lord krishna here we could see you again and again why what's so great about seeing him she is saying that for seeing you means that we no longer see repeated births and deaths should i repeat for seeing you means that we no longer see repeated births and deaths the word is apunar bhava darshanam all right apuna apuna means not again bhava darshanam seeing the repetition of birth and death as they say bhav sagar this material world darshanam means seeing apuna means not seeing again all right <laughs> that's the sanskrit here so basically what she is saying that whatever calamities had come to my life but the question is now why she is saying that uh, send those calamities again and again but krishna is already there right no krishna is about to leave to dwarka after the kurukshetra war is over all right and that is the time she is making all these prayers so now she is feeling that now all the problems in my life have ended finally yudhishthira maharaj is sitting uh, as the emperor of the entire world but the problem is krishna is leaving now krishna is like oh everything is fine <laughs> now i'm going to dwarka so queen kunti is telling better than everything being fine and you going away from us away from hastinapur away from indraprastha away from me pandavas and draupadi better than that is let all the problems come back but you stay with us at least <laughs> that's what she is telling because if i keep seeing you i will never take birth again and again yes because krishna says in the gita antakale cha mame va smaran mutva kale varam antakale cha mame va the state of being a person is at the end of his life will decide his next birth all right so if you are thinking of materialistic objects your husband your wife your son your daughter your mother your father then you are destined to take another birth then again you have to repeat 
A, B, C, D. Again, you will have puberty. Again, you will have love affairs. Again, you will get married. Again, you will be fired. Again, you will be divorced. Again, you will die. Again, you will take birth. All these things will keep repeating. But she is telling that if I keep seeing you, <laughs> then I will not take repeated births and deaths. All right. So now we will go to the purport. Generally, the distressed, the needy, the intelligent, and the inquisitive. Four categories. Okay. Distressed, needy, intelligent, and inquisitive who have performed some pious activities, worship or begin to worship the Lord. So, there's it's mentioned that there are four categories of people who come to God. This shloka is also there in the Gita. Artho, Jigyasu, Artharthi, Gyanischa, Bharat, Arshava. This shloka is there in the Gita. We will see that later. Distress means they are having some problem. Most of the people they have problems. That's why they go to pundits, they go to astrologers, they go to doctors, they go here, they go, they go to tarot readers, the priest tell us what's there in the future. When will I get rid of this problem? Or they go to some doctor or anything. If they have some depression, they can go to a counselor. And then they go to God also. Oh God, I'm in distress, please help me, you know. Then the needy, people who need things, who don't have this, who don't have that. The intelligent and the inquisitive. Intelligent people also inquire about God sometimes. They are like, oh, this uh, world is so amazing. It's so intelligently built. Who is the creator? And the inquisitive. Inquisitive is thinking, what's all this, man? What is this? What is that? Maybe there's somebody else also. <laughs> Who have performed some pious activities, worship or begin to worship the Lord. Which means that just if you are in these four categories, it does not mean that you will go to God. It means that those these people who belong to the four categories, apart from that, if they have done some pious activity, means some good activities, pious means some punya they have done, like you know, doing some good activities, like they might have read some scripture, scriptures or they might have helped somebody or might, they might have gone to some holy place or they might have given some donations, all right? or they have done some fasting. There are many pious activities which are there. Worship or begin to worship the Lord. So they start their spiritual life sometimes. These four categories who have done good activities. Others who are thriving on misdeeds only regardless of status cannot approach the supreme due to being misled by the illusory energy. So those people who are only thriving in sinful activities regardless of who they are, regardless of the status, they cannot approach God. Because they are misled by the illusory energy. That's what is written. Illusory energy means Maya Devi. That's what is there. That's the illusory energy. It, he, Maya Devi is the expansion of Lord Krishna. She is the, uh, as they say, Bahiranga Shakti. Yes. Lakshmi or Radha, she is Antaranga Shakti, internal energy. And Durga Devi is Bahiranga Shakti. That is this material world. All right. So in this material world, what happens? We come, we think that, oh, I am a husband. Now I have my wife, I have my children, or I have my father, I have my mother. These things are there. A man thinks like that. A woman will think like that for a husband. So there's this sense of illusory identity because actually a man is not the husband of anybody. It's for temporary time. Uh, he's uh, He puts a Mangal Sutra in the neck of a woman then he stays with her for around 30 40 50 years depending on their karma and then they will perish right but because of the illusory energy maya maya means illusion that which is not the man feels that oh i am a husband i am uh, you know i'm staying with this lady she's my wife therefore a pa for a pious person if there is some calamity there is no other alternative than to take shelter of the lotus feet of the lord Constantly remembering the lotus feet of the Lord means preparing for liberation from birth and death. Should I repeat? This is the secret. Constantly remembering the lotus feet of the Lord means preparing for liberation from birth and death. Therefore, even though there are so-called calamities, they are welcome because they can give us an opportunity to remember the Lord, which means liberation. So, the thrust of this verse is that when we have problems in life, we can remember the words of the scriptures that how miserable this world is. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Dukhala And then when we are remembering uh, God's lotus feet, then we are remembering him actually. Because without remembering God, you cannot remember his lotus feet, right? So when we are remembering him, it means we are getting liberated of our material 
uh, pro propensities our material desires are going away slowly slowly there are many things here there is bija there is kuta and all this which i'll not explain here one who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of the lord which are accepted as the most suitable boat for crossing the ocean of nations can achieve liberation as easily as one leaps over the holes made by the hoofs of a calf so generally a calf is very small so that calf keeps running here and there and you know that hoof prints of that calf is very small but for somebody who uh, takes shelter in god for that person crossing over this entire material existence of desires and propensities sinful propensities becomes like crossing that hoof print of a calf which we can just cross over yes it's very small in size but the entire material world reduces for that person who takes shelter of god mm -hmm. so it's written here that such persons are meant to reside in the abode of the lord and they have nothing to do with the place with a place where there is uh, there there is danger in every step so basically it's meant it's mentioned here that they stay in Lord Vishnu's abode, which is Vaikuntha, and they have nothing to do with a place where there is danger in every step now, which is that place. Yes, 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 it is this material world. There is danger at every step. Padam, padam, yad, vipadam, natesha. That shloka is there. He is writing from there. Then next, the material, this material world is certified by the Lord in Bhagavad Gita as a dangerous place full of calamities. Yes, Dukhalaya Mashashvatam Napnu Vanti Mahatmana Samsiddhim Paramam Gata. This is the shloka. It says, Less intelligent persons prepare plans to adjust to those calamities without knowing the nature of this place. Nature of this place is itself full of calamities. Yes, without knowing that the nature of this place is itself full of calamities. So there are many people uh, who will who you will see they will make a lot of plans you know they will say that oh if you have this problem do this for this you do that yes that that creates another problem sometimes so uh, we can find the solutions to our problem but at the same time you have to understand that problems will never be over in this world because it's like saying i will touch water but i will not get wet so if you are here in this material world, if you have decided to come here to enjoy independently, separately from God, then we are bound to have problems because there are clashes of egos all the time. Ego clash doesn't mean fighting out of anger, but you have a particular ego. Ego means your identity. Okay, I am a man, she is my wife, she is my girlfriend, he is my son, he is my daughter. And anybody tries to hin hinder you in that ego, I mean, they try to they try to grab something which you have then there's fight there is quarrel so the thrust is that we can find solutions to things but at the end we have to understand that if uh, we do not have spiritual wisdom then all our solutions are useless in one way because ultimately we are going to perish one day okay now this does not mean that we give up everything and we go to the forest it means that whichever state we are whatever position we have in society either we are married we are a man or a woman or whoever we are we do spiritual practices during the morning and in the evening like especially chanting mantras reading the scriptures and visiting holy places and visiting spiritual centers during the weekends especially if possible all right because this material world is certified by the lord krishna has certified it now we cannot uh, make any other arrangements you see because it's already certified by the one who has made this material world is itself full of calamities all right they have no information of the abode of the lord which is full of bliss and without trace of calamity that's the word why kuntha kuntha means pain misery suffering that which you don't want in essence that's the meaning of the word kuntha misery basically so why means that place which has no problems why kunt that is where lord vishnu resides so which is full of bliss and without trace of calamity. Satchit Ananda. It's full of Satchit Ananda. Full of eternity, knowledge and bliss. Ananda is happiness. The duty of the sane person therefore is to be undisturbed by unworldly calamities. Which are sure to happen in all circumstances. Krishna also says regarding this in the Gita. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Naso Chati Na Kangshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu 
madbhaktim labhate param so it said here that you should not be disturbed by the worldly calamities krishna also says tam stitikshasva bharata tolerate my dear arjuna tolerate the difficulties then it is said here that they have no information of the abode of the lord as we saw earlier like many people say that oh no this life is all in all material world is all in all just enjoy you know just have fun but they don't know that uh, after this after this life ends when you die then you will take another birth that they don't know and if you perfect your life spiritually if you do not have any material desires and you only have spiritual desires which means you want to be with god you want to serve him then at the end of life you go back to the spiritual world that's what is mentioned here the duty of the same person is therefore to be undisturbed by worldly calamities which means that we can have we will have calamities in life but we should have that much spiritual strength that even those calamities come but we don't get disturbed it is like suppose you are going outside and there's rain so if you don't have an umbrella you will get wet but suppose you have an umbrella so having the umbrella does not stop the rains yes should i repeat having the umbrella will not stop the rain which means miseries will keep coming but if you have the umbrella then um, that umbrella is like the protection from god protection doesn't mean that you throw some liquid in ganga and uh, some somebody says oh god will protect you it doesn't mean that it means that my definition of happiness is beyond all these material things because today you may get a promotion tomorrow you may be fired from job all right so we have to understand that our happiness can only come at a ultimate level when we are doing spiritual practices because then we are going more and more close to god so when that happens we already are happy inside and then even if there are problems you know externally it will not affect us much but suppose you don't have anything you don't have anything higher to cherish then there's one problem and have you seen people's lives getting they destroy themselves completely they commit suicide they get into addictions because their base gets shaken completely yes that's what happens which are sure to happen in all circumstances we have seen big big politicians prime ministers chancellors falling down from their positions yes we have seen big big conquerors kings being defeated being cheated being looted being killed being murdered suffering all sorts of unavoidable misfortunes one should make spirit one should make progress in spiritual realization because that is the mission of human life so human life means that either you are happy or you are miserable you have or you don't have that's the externals but internally you should be cultivating spiritual wisdom that in a way that you keep making progress towards god gradually that is the mission of human life the spirit soul is transcendental to all material calamities therefore the so called calamities are called falls actually the soul is not getting these calamities it is the body which is getting the calamities but we identify ourselves with the body that is why we feel like that and when we identify ourselves with the body then there are people who are linked to this body like i have this body my father my husband my mother my husband my wife all these people are there all right so then i will also think that oh maybe you know that person is linked to me so anything happens to that person will cause difficulty in my life but actually uh, that person is also so then i am also so then there is no bodily uh, this the link is only bodily link you see it is not a spiritual link which we have because spiritually that person can never be harmed because that's what he said here that the spirit soul is transcendental to all calamities nayanam chindanti shastrani nayanam dahati pavaka that shloka is there that the soul cannot be you cannot cut the soul kill the soul that shloka is there therefore the so called calamities are called false which means false does not mean that it is not happening in reality it means that our identification to those calamities is actually false actually in a sense there are no calamities because nothing is ours people say oh i lost my wife my husband my girlfriend my boyfriend but they were never yours and you were never theirs <laughs> so how can you lose something which is never yours now that's the beauty here a man may see a tiger swallowing him in a dream and he may cry for this calamity 
actually there is no tiger and there is no suffering it is simply a case of dreams so sometimes when we are in dreams we are like oh my god we are running 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 and, running, and, running. <laughs> and then we fall somewhere and we are like oh, what happened oh my god give me some water please so it's like the dream you see we are identifying ourselves with somebody who we are not actually in the dream because actually what is happening we are sleeping and we are perfectly fine hopefully i mean during the sleep nothing is happening but when we are dreaming we we actually feel that actually we are in trouble sometimes when we are dreaming in the same way all calamities of life are said to be dreams if somebody is lucky enough to get in contact with the lord by devotional service it is all gain contact with the lord by any of the nine devotional service is always a forward step on the path going back to godhead all right all right this the mention of nava vida bhakti here shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam that shloka is there in shrimad bhagavatam about which we will discuss very soon okay how to reach god nine divine devotional service process, processes of devotional service uh, which pralad maharaj has beautifully mentioned in the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam all right and many other places also it is mentioned so that is the trust of this verse the ultimate secret to happiness is that whenever we are in pain misery and problems we should always remember kunti devi is telling you know that may these calamities happen and again and again now to be very honest we may not be at her level that all these calamities happen to us actually if you see what happens in our life yes some some people sometimes we get we lose our job or sometimes Uh, so we have a fight or quarrel with somebody in extreme case somebody may die also but our life will never be as terrible as kunti devi's life was my god whoever knows the mahabharat they will know what she has undergone what she has seen yes her sufferings the list of her suffering is much more than what draupadi had seen of course if you compare it is much more than that it's much more than her also and anybody in the entire mahabharat she has seen the highest level of suffering so i mean among the ladies i mean so we may not be at her level to pray that oh god please send me more calamities <laughs> because when calamities come i can remember you that time but at least at our level whatever is happening depending on our karma whatever good or bad whatever is happening we should stop cursing god and we should take responsibility that it is only happening because of our actions and lord brahma says this in the shrimad bhagavatam he says tate nu kampam susumiksha mano bhunjan evatma kritam vipakam vidvagvapu bhir vidham namaste jive tayo mukti pade sadaya bhag that's the shloka which lord brahma says it is also there in my website if you go you'll find so lord brahma says in short i will say he says all the problems which are happening in my life it is because of my own karma lord brahma is telling this he is telling to lord vishnu and he is telling whoever with folded hands says thank you to you for giving me miseries because that's a part of my own karma mukti pade sadaya bhag he is eligible for liberation yes 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 he is he is eligible for mukti for liberation all right so when we can remember uh, god and his activities which will happen if we read the scriptures every day we chant the mantras and we associate with holy people in the weekends if possible and travel to holy places when we have time in the holidays if you do these activities then we will be able to remember god hopefully one day very easily and then even when we have problems in life they will still be there but we will not be affected by them or we will not be affected by them the way we get affected now all right so that's the trust of the verse ultimate secret to happiness okay there you go that's been a very long video as usual so if you are new to the channel and if you are not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding any part of your life then you can go to my website to book a reading and before i end as i say god is there with you all the time and if you remember him you will be happy okay statement changed and yes if you have not watched the earlier videos then please watch it okay then i mean for this playlist this is the 51st video and there are many other videos i guess 51 52 i don't know what's the number okay see you next time with another verse from the gita okay bye bye